And the meeting is now open for the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Pilar from New York, go ahead. Hi, good evening. I would like to express my gratitude for this church, the teachings that are imported here, the round table, the Bible lessons, and all the literature that is offered. I used to think that only big, impressive healings were worthy of giving a testimony about. However, I have learned to be grateful for all and every healing, no matter how small, and the graces and protection our Father and Mother is constantly bestowing on us every day. I work for a very demanding high-paid health insurance, managing claims, presenting cases that need approval or denial, and uh, having discussions with peers. I find myself becoming anxious and angry before discussing the cases, and I know a lot depends on whether the case is back up with the required criteria and the proper documentation. I dread these meetings. So before each meeting, I pray to God that he be there to guide me and give me the inspiration I need in order to serve the clients and obtain approvals of their requests if they are just and what they need. This prior preparation has helped me to feel calmer and be able to successfully push forward requests that otherwise would have been denied. Praying with a practitioner from this church has given me the confidence and assurance to know that with God all things are possible and to control my anger, apprehension, and sarcastic remarks during the meetings. I have also wanted to have more time to devote to the study of Christian science and understanding of it. Unfortunately, due to the very long hours, which leaves me very little time for the proper study. However, about two or three weeks ago, during the Wednesday testimony meeting, I heard a testifier say, the power of a right idea cannot be stopped. Next morning, I kept thinking about this and even wrote it out in a piece of paper. I kept going to it all morning. Later in the early afternoon, all managers were called into a meeting with the vice president. At the end of the meeting, she announced we were now allowed to work from home three times a week. This has been such a blessing as I now have more time to read the books and study during my free times and breaks from work. I am so very grateful for all the blessings from God, the practitioners of this church, and the true teachings of Christian science as giving in this church. Thank you for all beautiful readings and for the music tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. I'm very grateful for this church and for all that I am learning here about Christian science and for its practical uses in my life. Since childhood, I've been very interested in the idea of being an expert. My dad was always reading books and doing all he could to be better at his work. Even the toys I played with back then each had their own skills they were supposed to be really good at. So when I went into the workforce, I figured that whatever I am called upon to do, I'll give it my all in the hopes of becoming an expert, as I felt that's what life was demanding of me. It occurred to me recently that I have become somewhat of an expert in things that are useful and have served me and now this church well. This thought also brought the disturbing realization that I had become expert in things that were detrimental for me over the years. And I think it's safe to say that I was world class at treating myself horribly in a variety of ways. And that is a large factor in why I was brought to such a low place before coming to Plainfield. The introduction of Christian science into my life has been changing that self-antagonism into something so much healthier and useful. The fact that Christian science is a science means to me that there is indeed some level of skill building that is required. I've seen how following these precepts enables me to work better and be legitimately happy which I am so grateful for. Additionally, having practitioner support to ensure I am on the right track has been crucial. 
and shown me without any doubt that Christian science is in no part wishful thinking, but rather entirely composed of useful, practical, and learnable skills that allow me to be filled, fulfilled, useful, and successful in the purpose that God created me for. I'm so grateful for this church, for practitioner support, and for this science, which has transformed my life. Thank you. And now we have, let's see, there was a following comment left on a YouTube video. It says, thanks so much for all this important information. How wonderful it is to have them anytime, anywhere. I love all the information about Christian science. Thanks so much. And now we have a testimony from Diana in Berlin and Vienna. Hello, this is Diana from Berlin and Vienna. I'm calling from Berlin. I would like to express so much gratitude for this week's amazing roundtable and Bible study discussions. I felt uh, that the roundtable discussion on September 23rd was actually the whole, that the whole beginning was, was there for me, that it was a message to me personally. You were discussing how we need to make sure when we give a rebuke or denial that we make sure for every rebuke or denial that there are 10 affirmations and that leaves us feeling secure and safe and protected and on knowing God's allness. And from the September 15th and 16th weekend of Bible study and roundtable discussions, I got from that um, just a, something that I was doing all week, which was saying, God good, God good, God good, and radiate, don't absorb, radiate, don't absorb. And God loves me so much. He loves everything about me, even every hair on my head. And saying that to myself in my head constantly throughout the day, sometimes out loud, but constantly I was saying this to myself. And I started to get this renewal of energy that had been drained out of me in the last year and a half. And I realized that I know actually that in the last year and a half, I have been giving way too much of my oil and I need to be giving just my light. And that is what this did for me this week. I realized that by filling myself up with all of that very, those very simple ways of knowing God's allness constantly and having that constantly present in my thought has just renewed my energy. And I have so much more energy to share and give. And I don't feel that I'm just being sucked dry. And this has been such an important lesson for me. Um, I'm starting to feel a lot, a lot back to myself again, after a very difficult year and a difficult year in dealing with a lot of error. The funny thing is that the person through which this error is coming, I had a talk with him this weekend and we sat and talked and I was saying to myself the whole time, God, good, God, good. And trying to say radiate, don't absorb. Now, I couldn't even think. I've been saying radiate, don't, don't absorb for the whole week practically. And I couldn't think of the word radiate. And all I could think of is don't absorb, don't, don't absorb. I was thinking reflect God, don't absorb. What is it? It was like the mud of this person's thought was just trying to stop me from, from being clear. And, um, when, when I left the talk very quickly, I remembered radiate, don't absorb. So perhaps I needed to just say, don't absorb the whole time. But, um, I left and got back to myself, but I found it very, very interesting. Anyway, I, I'm so grateful to be, to have found you and to be becoming part of this church. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Linda. Thank you very much for the music tonight and the readings. I am very grateful for all that I have been learning about God's loving care. One of these times came when I felt overwhelmed by things that needed to be done around my house. Before working with a Plainfield practitioner, this kind of thing would cause depression, hopelessness, or a manic sense of trying to solve things myself. My practitioner has been teaching me the importance of obedience and faithfulness to God, and that I can trust God to meet my needs as I turn my life over to Him. I had mentioned to her once several of these projects and obstacles that had presented themselves. A week later, the time opened up for the person to fix the drainage pipes, which was one of the projects, in our yard. It was supposed to be a huge project uh, with lots of excavation, and we weren't even sure where to begin. Through inspiration, it turned into a much simpler fix. I watched as it all unfolded from conception, collecting parts, repair, and cleanup in a very um, almost impossible short time. It was beautiful how it came all together. That night it poured and the new drainage system worked very well. I had never witnessed a home project work this smooth. Everything pointed to God's work and his hand in this. I'm very grateful for all that I'm learning here. I'm grateful for, our, for Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and all that she gave to give us the science and this church and my practitioner. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Benjamin. Thank you. And uh, thank Amanda for, for the inspiring reading. Um, I'm so grateful to be here tonight and everything that I'm learning here. Um, I remember when I first came here years ago and I started learning about Christian science, Mrs. Sadie's writings, and then um, it was very clear to me that the whole thing that Mrs. Sid, the whole thing Mrs. Sidney was writing about was about our understanding of God and then how right acknowledgement of God can heal the sick, can turn any situation around. Um, sometimes it's very difficult to do. Of course, that's why we come here every day. Um, every week to learn how to understand God, how to help ourselves and also how to help our neighbor. Um, I remember today, I remember a few years ago, that happened a couple of years or so when I first came here. That time I was in a community college, not too far away from here. And then um, I remember one Sunday afternoon, no, it was on Saturday afternoon, um, a classmate of mine, um, who also happens to be a very good friend of mine, um, she had a, a young son that time. He was around seven or eight years old that I loved so much. And when, that afternoon, she was having trouble doing her homework because her computer was not working. And then um, she called me and she asked me if my computer is working, if she can come over to my apartment and have the job done. I said, yeah, why not? She said, but her problem now is that her son, Daniel, is very, very sick. He's having a very high fever that she don't know how, if she can leave him or bring him over that she don't know what to do, but she needs to do this homework because it's due on Monday. And of course, I know Daniel. I love him, like I said. I, I told her, pull him in the car, bring him over with you. She said, are you serious? I said, yeah, bring him over. And uh, <laughs> she didn't know what I, what I was talking about. I said, yeah, bring him over. And I just 
say that and um, it just came true that she needed to bring the son, her son over to my house if she was going to come. Then she, she um, listened and she brought, she brought him. She basically carried him up to the apartment because he wasn't actually moving very well. And when they came in, I told her to lay him on the couch in the living room and just let him stay there. So I told her, go continue, do your work. Let Daniel stay there, she, he's fine. And uh, my thoughts for Daniel was very, very clear. And uh, the way I love him, but I know that God loves him more than I do. And um, I knew that time that God would take care of him. And she continued to do her work. She forgot about Daniel and she was focused on her work. And then within a few minutes, Daniel was completely healed. And to her surprise, to my surprise, of course, he was run, running around all over the apartment, listening to his music, playing with my uh, iPod I had that time. I didn't say anything to her, I didn't say anything to her, I was just observing what was going on. By the time she was done, Daniel was completely healed. He didn't take any medication at all. Her mom, his mom was surprised. Then I asked Daniel, are you still sick? He was like, no. Of course, um, Daniel had no idea, uh, probably, of what happened. She doesn't. Both were Catholic. But I have no doubt what happened. I knew it was God who took care of his own. I didn't have to do anything. All I did was to know that God loved him. That right understanding of God, like Mrs. Sadie wrote, in all her books, can heal any disease, can turn around any situation, doesn't matter what it is. All you need to do is just have the correct understanding of God. Everything is taken care of. I'm very grateful for this teaching, for what God has done for me. I'm grateful for this church, and I'm very, very lucky to be here tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> Shardell. Good evening, and thank you for the awesome readings and our beautiful music. I would like to offer my gratitude for our patient God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, my practitioner, and the Plainfield Church Independent. Lately, because of all that happens here at Plainfield, I am becoming more conscious of the first commandment and what it means. Loving God supremely with my heart, mind, soul, and strength. Mrs. Eddy talks about God being called Elohim in the first part of Genesis, and a little book found here in our library, written by Irma Stewart, explains Elohim as the strong one being committed to self-perpetuity or limitless and an infinite. Thinking about the first commandment daily and realizing that with Christ's love it is natural to obey all the commandments and this brings comfort and stillness. There is a quote in this very tiny little book I would like to share. Quote, I, the ego, the only essence and emanci that emancipates the Lord, the one and only being, your God, which brings order out of chaos, which redeems, heals, and saves. End quote. Thank you. Thank you. Day Day from Georgia. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much for tonight's beautiful readings. I'm thankful for learning in this church that the truth is always available to me and everyone in need. 
as a result of studying and practicing Christian science consistently, I'm finding that no matter what challenging thoughts, feelings, or situations I'm faced with at any time, if I'm able to still my thought for even an instant, I'm able to let in even the simplest truth that meets the immediate need by eliminating the fear. This is a new way of living for me, as I used to struggle and suffer unnecessarily when trying to overcome challenges. Understanding now that the truth is ever-present and ever-near is an invaluable reminder that it's my responsibility to make sure that I acknowledge it regularly. I'm grateful for our watches that help me to practice this acknowledgement in order to become a more effective worker each day. Thank you so much again for all that's being taught in this church that is strengthening me and helping me to be a better Christian scientist, a better worker for God every day. Thank you so much again for tonight's readings and for all of the testimonies given so far. I'm very grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. If this is Bruce. Well, this testimony is also a plug for our magazine, Love is a Liberator because I was reading through it on our website, and it's so inspiring. And I came across this quote that says, The pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. The optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. That's by Winston Churchill. I was so happy to read that, because I think this described, to some extent, the transformation in my mindset when I first came to this church here in Plainfield. I did need a lot of help, and thank God there was a practitioner here who was very strong, very direct, and very effective. And I can remember complaining in my own way about the littlest of trials that seemed to come in my way and this practitioner would set me straight. And one of the things that she gave me was a passage from the Bible that says, my expectation is from the Lord. So if you have this, expect, this experience that you're going through, what's your expectation? That it's just going to be difficult? Or is it going to be good? After all, God is indeed good. And I was given many other things that were very helpful that straightened out my mind, turned me back to God, and opened the way for things to resolve themselves on a day-by-day -day basis, and it was, became a way of life. And I'm endlessly thankful for this training because it pretty much demonstrated this sta statement from Science and Health that there's four very specific things that divine love does. It inspires it illumines, it designates, and it leads the way. Think about that, what God does. God doesn't take us halfway and drop us off. He takes us all the way. What a wonderfully good God we have. I'm very thankful for learning this somewhat here in this church. Fairly from Maryland, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the readings tonight on eternal being. It was very wonderful to hear, and it was interesting to hear what Mrs. Eddy has said in Science and Health, that Lazarus was raised by Jesus because he understood that Lazarus had never died. It was a very interesting point. I want to express my deep gratitude to Mrs. Eddy for Christian Science and to the Plainfield Church, which literally saved my life at a time when I was desperate. As said in the watch last night, it was the voice of truth to a waiting world. And I'm grateful for what I have found here, correct Christian Science, so I could begin to try to use it. I'm very grateful for all the instruction 
the constant support of my practitioner at Plainfield. And I'm grateful to God, to Christ Jesus, and to Mrs. Eddy. And thank you very much for all the testimonies and the readings. Thank you. Gary. Every once in a while, I like to think back at the incredible way that God has taken care of this church throughout the years. You know, when I first got here, our uh, practitioner, Mrs. Evans, uh, told us that we need to pray for our church. It needs our prayers as much as any person needs our prayers. So those of you who are familiar with the history know that when we were kicked out of the organization many years ago, we were soon thereafter sued by the board of directors in Boston to try to prevent us from calling ourselves Christian scientists and worshiping as a Christian science church. So they hired the biggest law firm in New Jersey, paid them a lot of money, I'm sure they expected to overwhelm us and bankrupt us and bury us. Well, God found right here in our own backyard in Plainfield, one of the top litigators in the state of New Jersey, who happened to be a partner in the second largest firm in New Jersey, and who was more than happy to help us. And with his help and God's direction, uh, the case against us was ruled in our favor by the Supreme Court of the state of New Jersey, which freed us and every other church in the United States of America to be an independent Christian science church if they should choose to do so, which is what Mary Baker Eddy intended in the first place. Well, when we started printing our own, writing our own lessons and writing our own magazine, we needed a printer. So God brought a professional printer from New York City who set up shop in the basement and started printing. And he faithfully served us for many, many years. Then when we needed an electrician to wire the church so that we could record our services and broadcast, God sent us a master electrical engineer who was more than capable of doing the job. And when we needed a new organist, well, there happened to be one of the best organists in New Jersey right in our own Sunday school. And he graduated to be our organist and, and served us very well for many years. And when we needed a temporary replacement, well, God brought a good replacement to us right away, who filled the, filled the job. And he even helped us find the soloist when we needed a new soloist. And she has been faithfully serving us ever since. So when we needed someone to take over the church website and bring it into the, bring it up to date, well, God brought the, just the right person to us at the right time. And he has been doing a wonderful job. And then when we needed to replace our organist, our soloist found not one, but two superb professional organists, one for Sunday and one for Wednesday. I could go on. This, this, this could actually be a very long list, but I won't. <laughs> I'll spare you. But I am so grateful to see, in each case, God brought to this church exactly what it needed and exactly when it needed it to be able to fulfill his purpose for this church. This is not chance. This is not luck. This is not coincidence. This is God's plan being carried out in his church. I'm so grateful to see the lives that are changed and healed 
including my own. I don't know where I would be without this church and the Christian science that is practiced and taught here. So good to be with you all tonight. Thank you. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you so much for the beautiful readings tonight. On page 66 of Science and Health, it says that through great tribulation we enter the kingdom. Trials are proofs of God's care. I know that when I started to study Christian science, it seemed like everything was going wrong. I had a regular job, which I've had income from for years, that seemed to, uh, you know, go or change because I had the conviction to leave my profession. And then I was in a period of no income. And then other challenges came. It was a very difficult time. Many nights up crying and trying to find my way. But I now understand that what seems so difficult is what we are to use to overcome the fears that come with these times so that we can accept ourselves as the spiritual beings that we are, as was read tonight, and to have everything else in our lives, all areas of our lives, planted on a perfect spiritual foundation, God being all, and us having all the good that he gives. I am so grateful that through that time I found uh, Christian science has practiced in this church where I learned some of the most practical things of how to use the truth in everyday life. I've been so blessed with that. Helped me lose all the fears I had. And now I know that if we see these times as opportunities to lead us to where our life should be so that we lose the sense, the awful anxiety, worry all the time about whether it's our health, finances, our jobs, relationships. I can't say enough about what Mr. Seddy has given us Christ Jesus' example. I am so grateful for everything I have learned that has really shown me that the truth about our life is based on God, Spirit. And I know that what is being, going on here is reaching far and is helping others find this truth, that God does not change. His good is here for all of us, and we can rely on him. So happy to be here tonight. Thanks for all the other testimonies. Grateful, very grateful to be here. Thank you. Mary. Hey, I have a lot to read tonight. Um, <clears throat> the first from South Carolina, Plainfield Church. I discovered your website because it was printed in Mr. Hartsook's newsletter, that's the banner, and I have loved listening to your online offerings. They have been very educational, a great help to my progress. Thank you. And this one from Washington State. Dear Plainfield Christian Science, I'm writing to say a big thank you for your YouTube channel and all the readers and people involved in getting the videos online. It is a gift. I have listened to Oneness and I Am That I Am dozens of times. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep it up. And then this one, um, I think it might be Virginia, I'm not sure. Uh, dear members, I called the church a few days ago and had many questions answered about the differences, positive ones, with this church and my previous branch church. I'm listening more and more to much of your YouTube program, programming and you have reached out to me and deepened my understanding of Christian science in ways I can't begin to explain. I am very, very grateful for your work and I want to be a part and a supporter of it as a member. I plan to call in to live events eventually, once my courage is up. Thank you, and please accept me as a member. With love and blessings to you all. Of course we will. 
And this is Colorado. Very often on Wednesday evenings, I listen to the Wednesday evening testimony meeting. My husband goes to his meeting and I go to mine. I've been having some heartbreaking problems with my grandson. He has a seeming personality disorder and at times it seems hopeless. The woman who testified on September 19th at the testimony meeting, the one who worked with children with behavior problems, helped me immensely. She said that science for her was the only answer to problems like this. I would like to thank her for answering some of my questions. I appreciate the light she shed on the spiritual approach to this seemingly serious problem. It's unfortunate that the world does not believe that the Christ truth will heal mental problems, but we know nothing is impossible to God. And then this from England. I've been so grateful for finding the Plainfield website. I have been reading and listening to articles, Bible study sessions, and roundtables, and it is amazing. I'd like to thank you all for all that you are doing and your dedication to broadcasting the truth. I wish I lived near the church to come and to see you all. And then I'll read a few things from our church website bulletin board. The first from Florida. Thank you for last Sunday's timely roundtable discussion on handling demons. I'm grateful for a better understanding of the non-reality of evil but the need to expose it for what it is, nothing. Perfect love cast out fear is the answer, but I must be willing to stare it in the face and to unmask it. And then she gives the definition of the devil from Science and Health in the Glossary. And then Pennsylvania. Many thanks to all who contributed to the roundtable for September 23rd, entitled Christian Science, the Religion of Love. There was so very much that I found helpful, instructive, and healing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The lesson on Christian science, fo focusing on its heart and soul being love, was also powerful and needed. And then Florida again. Uh, gratitude for the, our magazine, Love is the Liberator. Thanks to everyone who put God's love, time, and energy into this inspirational issue. I'm learning and growing by reading and studying the wonderful resources freely made available at Plainfield. Thank you all for, the, for shining brightly. And then Virginia. This is, a, this is simply a bulletin board post of gratitude. I just opened the Daily Watch for this week, number 344, uh, by Gilbert Carpenter and was just amazed and grateful for the words of encouragement and wisdom regarding the handling of error. As I read, I thought, why, this is me, declaring the truth diligently, arguing every moment to make sure error wasn't lurking around the corner ready to attack. I also have felt at times exhausted from thinking, have I covered all the scientific truths or have I missed something? I felt as if I needed a two-week vacation. But then, after reading the watch, I realized I just needed to be awake and alert as to Eris' mesmeric suggestions, which are nothing but lies about the truth. And a lie can never destroy the truth. The bigger the lie, the bigger the truth. That I needed to see God's allness and give power to Him solely. It is so comforting to always find on this website words of wisdom and encouragement for every challenge you are handling at the time. God truly is with us every moment, meeting every human need. And then from Virginia, thanks for the wonderful reminder that God is all. I have found myself in the same dilemma that you speak of in your post, and this week's watch does hold the answer. And then we had a couple more from uh, Texas, just expressing great gratitude for our music, our Sunday faith singing, the beautiful songs. And she writes the words to those songs if anyone ever wants to read them. They are very ins inspirational in themselves. I'd like to express gratitude tonight, too, for those beautiful, inspired readings, such beautiful music we have here every week, and an abundance of testimonies, which I'm so grateful for. I was thinking about something the other day, how uh, in the past, sometimes things from the past 
would try to come up and perhaps hold me in them in some way. Uh, you know, there are many, there are many things. Perhaps you've there was some physical uh, physical problem you had, and maybe you seem to still suffer some of the effects of it, or perhaps an accident, a divorce, a loved one who passed on. Uh, and as we've certainly heard tonight, Christian science is the answer to everything, including this. Uh, I had turned a while ago in the Red Book on page 78 where Mrs. Eddy says, Any evil in the past cannot act as present consequences, nor claim those consequences of evil to be indestructible. For God knows no evil, and it has no presence. That is the answer. We know in science that evil is not real. It does not have any presence. We give it the presence by going over it, thinking it, thinking it was real in the first place. And by doing that, we give it a seeming life that it doesn't have. And I know in instances in my life when I've applied this truth, any seeming effect from the past, any bad effect, has disappeared into its native nothingness when I've applied this truth and knowing, as Mrs. Eddy says, evil has no presence or power. It never did, it doesn't now, and it never will. I'm so grateful to dear Mrs. Eddy, her textbook, for our wonderful church, our wonderful meetings, and to be with you tonight. Thank you.